five weeks in, 16 weeks out of my next bikini competition. This is part two of my six part bikini competition vlog series. <laughs> with a little update of my prep. To be completely honest, things are going well. I have nothing to complain about. There's been a couple little like hiccups and bumps and things going on along the way over the last like five or six weeks. But overall, like to be completely honest, I'm happy and from what I understand from my coaches, they're happy too with the progress that we're making and the path that we are aligned on for the next four more months. So. Things are going well, very happy. Now I'll dig into nutrition first and give you a little overview about that. There was a little hiccup that I had, probably around like weeks four and five, I was having digestion issues and I was really, really bloated. There was one morning I woke up and my stomach was like, distended. It was big and I'm not being dramatic or anything when I say it, but I sent that uh, photo to my coach, I'm like, this is not right, Some, something's not good. So we had to dial in a few little things in terms of nutrition, I had to make a couple adjustments. From what I slash we think it was, it had something to do with my protein intake just because of my, I'm gonna call it dietary sensitivities, my genetic sensitivities in terms of digesting fully, but that's for another day. But I think we figured out what the issue was and I'm feeling way better now. Digestion is more regular, no more bloating, feeling really good when I wake up in the morning, lean and strong and everything. So yay, we got that all figured out and we are ramping the calories back up again. So feeling good with that. Training is going really well as well. Um, so I am still following the same programming as when I started. And to be completely honest, I don't know if slash when we are adjusting programming. It, I have a feeling I will be doing the same training for 21 weeks in total and I'm totally okay with that. We did that with my last prep. I did 10 weeks of the exact same training for 10 weeks and I was fine with it. Why? Because we knew it worked if we were seeing really good results on a regular basis. So why change something if it's working, right? Yeah, there are some days where it feels extremely boring and I'm like, cool, I'm doing the exact same thing again. And I cannot always progress in weights, which we know like we'll get the newbie gains as soon as we get a new training phase where we start to see progress over a couple weeks, but then it really starts to slow down. So what I've been doing is I've been tracking my session volume and it's basically just taking the total weights over all of my reps and sets and adding it up to one big number at the end of every session. And I'm seeing that progress. So even though I might not be increasing all reps and sets by a certain amount of weight every week or every session, I am progressing a little bit and those numbers are helping me really feel like I'm, I'm progressing on a regular basis. So that's just something little I'm doing in my training to kind of help me stay motivated and push through, through all the repetition literally and figuratively that I'm doing. I'm also having a lot of fun with the posing too. Now that I've kind of figured out the guidelines of what I need to do, I am having a lot of fun. Kat is a phenomenal coach and has been so supportive with everything. We've only had one session together so far, but just the constant feedback that she gives me, just the reassurance of everything makes me feel really good. So I'm very grateful, very happy with the with the posing and the feedback that I've been getting from Kat and I'm liking it. I feel like it's more easy than the last posing routine I did. There's basically only a front and a back pose that I have to hit. So it is a little bit easier, whereas in the last competition I had like front both sides and the back posing that I had to work on. So it's, I've literally cut it down into half and I can really nail, nail these cues and hit all the points that I need to hit. So having fun with the posing. Now, one thing that I did want to talk about this video is the difference between flexible dieting and a rigid meal plan. One of my clients actually asked me about it and I don't think I ever really fully gave her the proper answer. So I'm doing that now. So what is the difference or why do I preach with my clients doing flexible dieting yet here I am following a rigid meal plan and I have a very valid reason for that. For the most part, flexible dieting offers a really sustainable approach to nutrition for 
a vast majority of the population. It offers balance and variety with no restrictions and it, you can still feel like you are progressing towards certain goals and it could also be physique related goals um, or body composition goals and you can still make progress with it while still feeling balanced, while still going out and enjoying foods at restaurants and not being like, no, I can have not have that. That's an X food, things like that. You know what I mean? So it does offer a lot of flexibility literally with your day-to-day -day lifestyle approach with nutrition. I am literally being judged on my physique when it comes to this competition. So I've always been judged on my physical ability when I've done powerlifting, but now when, as I'm doing bikini competition, I'm literally being judged on my physique. When it comes to a meal plan, that is very important because the little things like the fiber for digestion or sodium and water retention, those little things can make a huge impact in terms of fine-tuning physique and the reason why we're doing a meal plan is we can be more consistent with the intake so the body can respond better we can make adjustments easier and we can see how we progress so instead of being like oh well let's just take out this amount of carbs but how those carbs can be broken down into sugar fiber or starches it does make a big difference when we are literally being judged on physique so the finer details in terms of fitness and figure competitions do really matter. So again, flexible dieting has variables. There are things like sodium intake, fiber, how your body responds to fast and slow digesting carbs. These are all sm smaller details that really don't matter nearly as much when it comes to flexible dieting, which is nice and relaxed. But when it comes to meal plans, these things do matter. So the nice thing about following a meal plan is yes, it's boring, but honestly, for me, it's easy. I don't have to think about what am I gonna eat next? What do I want to eat? It's like, this is the plan, this is what I do. And it actually, for me, it's easy because I don't have to think about things. Be like, cool, it's this time I'm gonna eat, this is what I'm gonna have. And I really like my meal plan too. I like all the foods I'm eating. I'm still eating lots of fruit, lots of vegetables. I'm having carbs, I'm not pulling back on carbs. I'm eating a variety of different proteins. I'm eating chocolate twice a day. Like, things are good. I'm not complaining about a rigid meal plan. Like it's flexible and I really like it. In terms of competitions, there are many coaches that promote flexible dieting leading up to any kind of fitness competition. And that's great. I think it's awesome. I am not fully experienced or very well experienced in terms of coaching or fine tuning a physique when it comes to fitness competition, let alone trying to win a fitness competition. That I am leaving up to the professionals, which is exactly why I hired a coach. He knows much better how to manipulate foods than I do, which is why I've hired him to help me fine tune my physique when it comes to nutrition. Flexible dining is possible to do a competition. I'm sure that if I really pushed it with him, we could kind of experiment, but I really don't want to experiment. I would like to friggin' win. So I am going to leave that up to a professional and if he tells me to do something, I'm going to do it and I'm gonna execute it entirely. So the pros of following a meal plan, in my opinion, you take out any guesswork, it's really simple to follow, and to be completely honest, it makes meal prep and grocery shopping a hell of a lot easier. You can cook things in bulk, it's done, and you don't have to think about it. You know exactly what's gonna be on your grocery list, you get it, and you're done. Now, I guess we can say the cons of following a meal plan, boring to follow, kind of takes a little bit more effort instead of just being like, oh, I'm hungry, I'm gonna go out and grab a bite to eat. It's like, well, we got a plan to follow and there's no tacos on the meal plan. That's a problem, <laughs> but I'm doing it. The things I will do to win. And then one other thing that I did want to talk about is that a prep does not always entail a caloric cut in order to get shredded. And I think that's very misleading. And a lot of people asked me at the beginning, it's like, how do you, how do you approach this in terms of slashing calories? Or how do you feel? How do you get through that mindset of having less calories or being restricted? And to be completely honest, I am not being restricted at all right now. When I'm doing a bikini competition, the look of a bikini competitor, for the most part, it's a soft physique. So I don't need to get like, paper skin thin and be like super duper shredded honestly and if you get too lean in bikini you lose points so there is like a fullness factor that i have to have and to be completely honest i'm eating more calories than when we started like five weeks ago so there is this big misconception that 
all of a sudden you start prep, which means calories get slashed. And that is not the case at all. It has been five weeks and we've increased calories. We're pushing muscle growth. It's not necessarily me getting shredded. Everybody does this differently and where everybody's starting point is different. For me, I don't have to lose weight right now. There is probably going to be about one month out, so like four to six weeks out, where we will pull back calories just to get in like a little bit more fine detailing, um, to pull my waist in to make sure my glutes are nice and round and voluptuous, voluptuous. But bikini girls are soft. I don't wanna get down to less than 10% body fat. To be completely honest, I don't know what my body fat percentage is right now, but I don't want to be down that low. It's not healthy, it's not sustainable, and it's not what the judges are looking for. To be completely honest, there was one point, like I would mentioned, when I was having a bit of digestion issues, that within like three weeks, I gained six pounds. I went up like very quickly. So for people to think that, oh, you're doing a bikini competition, I want to do like prep like that, and I want to get lean and shredded, like that is not the case at all. So I don't want people to think that that's always the case or if it's misleading or maybe that's just a myth that people don't know about so hopefully I can clear that up a little bit and tell you the truth that bikini competition doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get cut and shredded in a short amount of time so that wraps up part two of my six part bikini competition vlog series if you do have questions drop them in the comments below or you can post them or comment on them on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you are watching this video. Thanks for hanging out, thanks for watching, thanks for following along, and thank you for being bomb.com. We'll talk later, strong friends. Actually, I think it's time for me to go eat again. I think I have some papaya with like chocolate sauce. Yeah, prep's good, my friends. Stay strong.